everyone. Welcome back to Stan with Chantel. Hey guys, Ty here from the Jesmond County Public Library. Today we are with the Nicholas Fire Department and we are going to take a look at arson investigation and fire science. Take a Mobile fires are going to have the same kind of damage, but I think we all realize the one main thing that's already here that's going to be different usually than, than any uh, building fire is that there's already gasoline here. There's already oils here. There's already uh, all the components of a flammable situation. So then when we're looking at arson, much harder to prove and we have to look at things much closer than we did. So an example of that type of fire that was an arson that we had here uh, recently was some guys were stealing gasoline out of cars. They were drilling the tank and then after they got that fuel out, they used a little bit of fuel to burn the cars up to cover a crime. So that's happening in fire investigation all the time too, where we're looking at something that may not appear to be a crime, but it's, it's covering up a crime and it might not even look like arson to begin with, which is why we have to have a really good process that we're going through so that we can determine what has happened. So in that case, they were lighting it up, uh, putting gasoline inside the vehicle so that they could make it look like they hadn't done anything there. And we ended up catching those uh, individuals. We put out information, we found a video, uh, and that's that's really important to fire investigations too. Nowadays, there's not very many areas where you can have uh, any kind of private situation anymore, especially if you're out in public. So you can find uh, doorbell videos or videos from a, a business that's, that's scanning to make sure, and you can end up seeing fire evidence and see what's happened in a fire and watch it grow even potentially uh, based on uh, those videos. And then you would use that to determine what's happened in your cause. So you're using technology, science, and all the knowledge you gain through experience to investigate fires. Hey, so let's talk about certifications. How do I get to the place where I am a fire investigator? And I'll just kind of talk to you about how the, the path that I took. Uh, I've been firefighter for 25 years uh, on the same department and I kind of moved up and, and learned everything I could about the fire service and for fire investigations the first thing when you're just a brand new firefighter is to tag along with your officer and observe and see what they're saying about the fire and listen to what they tell you about what's going on in a fire and then as as you gradually get more time on and you've gotten certifications and you've learned about fire behavior and building construction and all the aspects of fire that are important to your job also all completely uh, fall into what you're going to need to be a fire investigator so when you're doing doing that you're gonna you're gonna do a lot of observation and then you're gonna start taking classes and in the state of Kentucky you're gonna take uh, arson one two and three and you're going to get those certifications and you're going to you're going to move up a little bit on the cert certification uh, scale because all the the beginning certifications is not really anything you can jump ahead on you've got to you've got to take each step as it comes and build a foundation so that you can get to to the other certifications so you take those classes uh, you might take a trip up to the national fire academy once you've gotten those certificates done and you've gotten some of your other firefighting certificates done, like the International Association of, of uh, Firefighters uh, certificates. Once you get that lined out, you're going to be working with uh, two organizations, basically, are we going to be where your certifications are going to come from. And one is the International Association of Arson Investigators, and the other is the National Association of Fire Investigators. Both pretty much the same thing. We're not talking about a whole lot of difference there, uh, besides maybe the uh, amount of, of training they provide. Um, so online, you also, once you get to these levels, you're also gonna have uh, training and certifications that you can get online from the uh, certified fire investigator uh, trainer.net. And you're gonna take a lot of what we call continuing education classes. So you're gonna, you're gonna learn what to do. So after arson one, two, and three, uh, and some experience and some time and some of those other certifications then you're going to go for two uh, kind of mid-range certifications so you're going to get a, a certified vehicle fire investigator certification 
and a certified fire and explosion investigator certification. And those require certain hours of training, certain experience, uh, certain levels of fire investigation training, like that arson one, two, and three. And, and then in the state of Kentucky, at that point, once you've achieved those certifications and those are tested, so you take a written multiple choice test when you're ready and you have to do, uh, you've got to be proficient in it, you're going to have to score uh, better than you would for some of the classes that you just take in high school. So you're not, you're talking about, a, they want that you don't just minimally know it because for any fire investigation, you could be called to court to answer for your fire investigation. And you might be talking about it as a fact witness, but somebody might be bringing you in to speak as an expert witness. And in that case, you've got to be up on having those certifications and training. And you've also got to be uh, well-versed in something that would be just continually to something you kind of certify yourself in. And that would be NFPA Fire Code 921, which is the nationally recognized standard in a court of law for how you should investigate a fire. So you, you need to read through that and keep up on the, the, the training on that. Because some of the science that's, that's being built upon is, is changing right now with some organizations like the National Institute of Safety and Technology, and they're doing testing related to fires how ventilation affect fires, how uh, the other aspects, contents, and, and everything else. So let's go somewhere there. So what, what's changed in contents? Since I was on, some of the furniture has totally changed. This, this piece of furniture that we're looking at right now, uh, back when I started, would have been made with some more natural fibers, cottons, uh, things that burn at a, at a lower uh, rate. Now, the furniture that's being made is being made with, with petroleum products. And so we basically have uh, a higher heat release rate, which is something you would learn about in fire investigation, which just means more heat's gonna come off this chair when it burns than an older chair. It's gonna, that release of heat is gonna be far greater. So if I, if I have this burn right here in this room, it's gonna fill it up with a lot of toxic smoke and gases versus if I had a really old chair, it's going to burn and put off some smoke, but we might still be able to see in this room, for instance, just, just for a short example. So the, the heat for firefighters and for fire investigators has changed because there's more heat, higher rates of it, faster speed, volume, and, and temperature is happening. And when I first started, we, we had less of a, a situation in, in that case. Also, the white houses are built now where they're very tight. There's not a lot of air there. The insulation is very good compared to when I was first starting in, in firefighting. So you've got a very tight house, so there's a tight compart compartment there, and the fire is going to grow much hotter, much faster, and quicker. And that affects us as fire investigators because we're going to see stuff that's burning, the contents. And some of those heat release rates include chemicals and, and components that maybe were just made in the last couple of years. So we're gonna to have to do uh, a lot of research to figure out why we had so much heat in a room, for instance, for example. So lots of change. So your path to being a fire investigator is to find uh, someone else who's investigated fires for a while and observe and stay with them kind of on a, on a mentoring uh, level because it's gonna take you so long to gain the experience that you're gonna need that if you can gain that experience from the other fire investigator that's got time in, you're going to start to gain your own experience based on the knowledge he's, he's given to you. So that mentoring thing, apprenticeship, whatever you want to call it, for fire investigators is really key. I mean, I can think of several guys over the years that I listened to every time I was at a fire with them. And this is what's going to bring you along in what's happened. So uh, another dynamic is the now, when you investigate a fire, you have to use a scientific method. It is not acceptable for you to go into a building and say, well, pretty sure because Billy Bob said it started over here that that's what happened and ignore all the evidence and science around that. Because when, when you take that to court, you're not going to be allowed to even testify because they're not going to consider you knowledgeable in what fire cause and origin is.
Thank you for tuning in for the STEM with Chantel. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share this video so you can be aware of the next time we upload.